tonight, it was the end of the road for Josh. You know this season is going to be good when a major player is the first evicted. One might say self-sabotaged as well, as Josh's feelings for Sam made for a difficult future in the house. Josh, thanks for joining me tonight. Thanks for having me. Well, look, there's no doubt that there will be a strong reaction from the public in terms of your time in the house and your relationship with Sam. So let me ask you first, if you were looking from the outside in, what would your reaction be of this guy called Josh who went into the house? I think I'd ask um, which personality of Josh I'm talking to, to be honest, because <laughs> I think I bring a few into the house. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know... I don't know. I've never watched really TV and I don't try and be normal. I just try and be myself. And that's pretty left of kilter, really. Mm. Well, you must sort of know that going into the house, you, you live there 24 hours a day, yet only 90 minutes of footage is aired across sometimes a whole two day period in the house. That means there are just a lot of bite sized pieces of your time. Now, a major yeah. focus, a major focus of that time for you, um, was you airing your feelings towards Sam. In reflection, do you think that being in the Big Brother house was the right time to air such personal feelings in front of the entire Australian audience? Oh, so <laughs> what the, I think what you have to remember is this was mid-COVID, yeah? Yeah. And um, I was one of the primary carers of my mate passing away of cancer and you literally right. couldn't do anything. So I got offered the offered a, a spot on the show really from big brother and i said absolutely not and um they said well what can we do to get you on the show and i had this idea i was like well put sam on the show because i've always had a bit of a crush on her and we've had a few flings in the past and um she was in queensland i was in new south wales and i needed a multi-million dollar organization like channel seven to make that happen and um thankfully they did it, it seemed to be that you were obviously super surprised to see Sam. I mean, that could just be the way the editing was. Did Sam then obviously know that you were going to be in there? Well, I probably wouldn't have done the show unless I was pretty sure Sam was going to be on it. Hey, because I had, I had more important things to do, to be honest. I didn't go on there to be a celebrity or of any type. I just wanted to see someone that I liked and, um, yeah, I made it happen, but I'm pretty bad at understanding consequences, and I did not <laughs> understand the consequences of going on TV. So do you know if Sam knew that you were going to be in there, though? I, I know you're saying you knew that she was going to be in there, but did she know that you were going to be in there? Um, well, I'd be surprised if it was a surprise, to be honest. Okay. Look, this is a tough question, um, but the footage that aired showed that you had very strong feelings towards Sam, yet Sam appeared to not have those feelings for you in return. In fact, she, she, she even in some instances was concerned about your behaviour towards her, like, because it seemed to be full on. Did, did you, is, is it a bit of editing there or did you misread the situation perhaps? Um, oh, listen, there's always editing, but I'm a pretty full on type of person. Yeah. And, um, she's actually a very flirtatious type of person. So I think maybe they didn't add in a fair bit of what goes on in the house, but, um, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't actually watched the episode yet, so <laughs> I can't tell you, but, um, yeah, I don't know what to tell you there. Well, the way your relationship with Sam evolved before Big Brother was not entirely pieced together on air. Do you, do you mind me asking about your previous relationship? Like, were you actually boyfriend and girlfriend or was it an on-again, off-again thing? Um, I met Sam when I was living in Melbourne and she was living in Melbourne and she lived on the west side of the city and I lived on the east side of the city. So it was a, like, it was a fair bit of work, but I think we actually met on Tinder. And yeah, we were seeing each other on again, off again for a hot minute. And then I got a, offered a job in Malaysia um, while we were seeing each other. And I told her I'd fly her over. But um, I ended up not getting paid to the end of my contract after three months. And we just had a little bit of a falling out. And I ended up um, hooking up with my Russian housemate, actually. <laughs> and we, yeah, I know. Privyet taktilar patsalu minya. And um, <laughs> when I got back, it was... Um, yeah, it was. We, we actually caught up again one or two times, but 
to be honest, I was pretty immature as a 25 year old, especially emotionally immature. Mm. And um, that's just something I've been working on for the last few years. And that's why I told Channel 7 to put her on the show because I was like, I want to show you what kind of man I am. Right. Well, I could be reading this wrong, but it appears that your whole game plan and expectations on Big Brother changed because in your package um, that they, they put up about you, you were single, you're open to finding love in the house, you were a leader, you were very direct, you're not a sheep, um, you're, not, you're not afraid to step on toes. So as a, a viewer, I could imagine, you know, how you might be in the house, but then you arrived and saw Sam and the whole Sam thing happened and then it kind of appeared that, it threw you off your your plan and expectations for the for the rest of the Big Brother experience. Is would that be fair to say? No doubt. I mean, absolutely no doubt. I I think it's really hard now because it's been so long and we've had so much freedom after COVID. But at that time, I essentially spent two years not seeing anyone, and um, yeah, I, I was actually just probably super lonely. And so I thought, oh, I you know, one of my I want to be a dad one day. I want to have a happy family. And I really love Sam's family and they were really kind to me. So oh, hold on a sec. One of my workers is rocking up. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I think, um, I don't know. It's, it's really hard without seeing it so far because we're doing the interview pre eviction. So I'm not really sure what they stitched together, but um, it did throw me off a fair bit. Hey, <laughs> Well, one thing I can say is immediately upon you entering the house, Sam was in the diary room and was just so surprised to see that you're in the house. She described you um, as her first Tinder date from years ago, um, and she said that it didn't end well. Um, she's obviously said that in the diary room, which of course goes out to all of Australia. Um, yeah. So I'm I'm happy to give you an opportunity to respond to that. She just said that you were a Tinder date that um, that didn't end well. I can't disagree with her there. I mean, well, fifty percent of relationships end up in separation, so it was just a matter of time between either me or her got separated. Really? Yeah. You're about to watch the the rest of the season unfold, you know, on our screens, you know, for the rest of the season. Um, there is potential love interest for Sam. I mean, Joel's in the house. Drew's, Drew's uh, come into the uh, into the house. Will it be difficult for you to see Sam potentially fall for, for someone in the house? If you ask me that after filming, yes. But now, absolutely not. <laughs> um, I think you kind of need to go through that pressure cooker environment to see what each other actually are made of. And because all we ever had was some fun times together for a couple of days or a week at a time, to be in that environment, I mean, I think I was the most unprepared of everyone there because I honestly had no idea what to expect. And um, I think everyone that's seen the show and loves the show and is passionate about it, they had a better idea. Mm. And so, I mean, hindsight's great, but... Um, yeah, I mean, I think I was, in some ways, I was the weakest weakest player in the house, I guess. Well, you ended up telling the house that you wanted uh, people to vote for you so that you would be evicted. Um, that That's a big call, being a big player, because you were definitely in that top group to win the 250000 given, you, you know, your I guess your leadership and your ability to really immerse yourself in the game. Do you think it was the right decision to effectively get yourself voted out? Well, now, no. At the time, <laughs> it felt like the right thing. And it actually gave me a couple of weeks extra with my friend before he passed away. So I don't regret it whatsoever. But um, if I knew what I knew now, I'd say that there's some people in the house that are more self-serving than a Coles checkout, you know? And then there's some people in the house that have really beautiful reasons for going into the house. And I'd say Dave's one of those for promoting his rough tracks. And um, he helps a lot of kids. Mm. And I was all prepared for someone to come in and ruin my um, alliance, essentially. And I didn't expect to like people in the house, to be honest with you. I thought they'd all be teeny bopper airheads. That the, the closest they've ever said to something original is coughing up Smith's chips. <laughs> and um, I was happy uh, to be wrong, hey. Because yeah. Reggie's so sweet, she'll give you diabetes if you hang out for too long. <laughs> and um, she says it how it is. And I really, I really love that. And that actually... What shook me more than Sam, I think, was 
actually having real people in the house that I, I looked up to and I got along with because at the start I was like, oh, I'll just be a leader. And I was like, these people are just on here to get famous. And that was not my intention. I was on there to use channel seven to let me spend some time with someone I wanted to ask a question from. And she gave me an answer and I accept that answer and I, I move on, you know, essentially like, yeah, it wasn't about being a celebrity or, or anything like that for me. I mean, I'd love to do radio. I think I could write some brilliant scripts because I've had a pretty crazy life, but I do not function. I'm an outdoor plant. And so if you put me inside, hmm. I just wilt. I've, I've, I didn't know that about myself and now I do. Well, let's go to a little bit of um, game plan. You were quite opinionated about the first eviction being cancelled by the OG group. Why were you so opposed to giving those people, uh, I guess, a longer opportunity to find their place in the house? Well, for one, I think um, I thought everyone came to play. Hey. And so <laughs> I walked into the house and I was just like, well, I haven't seen the show before, but I've come to play because I hate losing. I am a sore loser. Like... <laughs> Even growing up, my brother used to let me win things just so I'd play because he knows that I'd crack the shits if I lost. So um, I've changed that now. But, yeah, I mean, what do you do? Well, I'm a loose unit. <laughs> Fair enough. We're all different. That's what makes the world. That's that's probably why you're in the Big Brother house because you, everyone's different. Um, <laughs> this newbies and OG thing is, is hard because if you push out too many – OG people that the Australian audience love, it's possible they might not vote well for a newbie, for you. Um, you know, when it comes to the Australian public vote at the end. But on the other hand, if you don't vote out the OG people, they're, they're going to vote out all the newbies. So so what strategy would, would you have used or perhaps suggest to the other newbies in the house of this OG versus newbies and, and how to get to the end? I think that's actually a really good question. And every single one of us will have a different answer but the hard part is you don't like i'd never seen big brother before so when everyone appears on this screen to stop the thing and i was kind of a bit shocked that everyone fangirled out over these people on the tv and i was like who are these losers in my opinion i was like i've seen better lineups at urinals <laughs> and so <laughs> when they were just like oh this is this i didn't even know reggie was blind and i couldn't tell dave and um him apart and i thought estelle intimidated me to be honest i was just like who is this strong powerful woman standing up to me because i felt like i was in control of the house at the time and um i was i was actually scared i was terrified that they they knew my plan they knew my secret and they were coming in there to like stuff up what i was building mm. and then i think in the first I don't know if they show it on TV, but like me and Reggie just clicked. And so when she wakes up in the middle of the night and needs to wee, I don't sleep for five days in that house. I don't really eat that much. I don't even go to the toilet for those five days. I was just running on pure stress and adrenaline. And um, yeah, when Reggie came into the house, that actually changed everything for me because I, I you know, not to sound too cheesy, but I um, hope you're not dairy intolerant, but she... <laughs> Yeah, she changed how I saw the game and I thought, hell, I don't want to beat someone like this. I don't want to beat a blind woman with a sick kid for money. It's not me. I'm a mm. disability support worker and that's my whole life. Mm. And so when I saw her and when things weren't working out with Sam, um, I got an answer from Sam and Mel, I don't know if it shows it or not, but Mel convinces me to stay and I thought, hell, I'm just going to come here and I'm just going to set it up for the OGs and make sure that Reg um, can get as far as possible because I found Joel to be a massive threat. Um, as a physical player, as the only person that could yeah. actually beat me. And mentally, I know that I'm strong. Like, I don't know if you see or, or not in that second challenge there that that was really just a test of how much you can endure pain. Yeah. And it was the women that had kids, they got really far. And Joel, who's an absolute super athlete, but for me, I was running on fumes and I just sat there and that was just my mental strength on display, really. And mm. I thought, I'm going to win. I'm going to put up Tim as a safe bet. I'm going to put up Joel and Lara because I found her incredibly annoying. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually interesting you say that because um, most people uh, think of the people, the challenge beasts, all the, all the guys with the muscles and stuff. But if you actually look at some of the 
more recent Big Brother series, it's a lot of the women win the challenges, especially if you have to do something for like three hours and hold a pose or, or something like yeah. that. So, you know, Joel did start off quite well, but I mean, you never know going forward with uh, some of these challenges because a lot of them are, you know, are, are mental stuff. And obviously you were very good at, at your one, um, just, just pipped at the post. Yeah, I mean, it would have been different if um, if I won that because I would have pretty much changed the whole dynamic of the house. And it would have been interesting to see how Drew, myself and Sam get along after that. Yeah. But, um, you know, I was raised by pretty much all women. I've got older sisters and I, I wouldn't have been disrespectful, but I would have got them both out of the house and just played my own game for the people that I enjoyed because... I don't know. I I, saw, I told Sam in there, I was like, this is not a conducive environment to fall in love. Like, mm. it's not. So as a relationship counsellor, I thought that she'd understand that and that I just wanted to show the, what I'm made of, essentially. And, um, hey, if you don't like what you see, I can totally respect that. You can't be angry about it, can you? She's probably just got better taste than I'm worth. <laughs> oh. Who knows? Who who knows? So so, what happens to uh, to Josh post Big Brother? Just return to work as normal, or are you looking for new opportunities? Well, I don't know. I've been approached by a few producers from other networks, and um, already before the show even aired, and they, it was totally unrelated. But they were just like, "Hell, you make good TV. You will make great TV," and. I think I did in a sense. I mean, they only put ten percent of what I did in there that they could fit into the edits but um for me i don't know i don't as i said in there i don't want to be a d-grade celebrity but i would love to be able to be a storyteller and make money off that rather than just change the world one coat of paint at a time you know mm. I, I can i can definitely see channel nine giving you a call for married at first sight i mean with with uh you know the people that can speak up and all that kind of stuff and the dramatic moments in that show i, I don't know how you'd go i'd rather I'd rather hang with Ned Kelly than go on maps, to be to be honest. I mean, it's just not my cup of tea. And I had no idea about reality TV. I'd never really watched it. So yeah. I'd rather something like that's why I quit modeling is was I was sick of other people deciding how you look like you're the blank canvas, but it's the stylist and the photographer that tell you how you look. And I found that really hard in, in, in the fashion industry because I was like, don't make me look like a like an idiot. When I'm not, I was like, if you don't have the, the talent or taste, get someone that does. And so I'd rather do something where I can be a bit more creative and myself rather than just be someone that takes a pretty picture. Mm. Well, second last question. Um, just given the situation you found yourself in with Sam and, and the almost self-eviction, is there anything else that you would like to, I guess, set the record straight um, on anything? I guess the Australian public think, look, here's a guy that's coming to the house seen the seen this girl confessed all these feelings she's kind of backed away um and then he's kind of done a self eviction type of thing i mean is is that's just how it i guess it plays out i mean is yeah. it is there anything that you would like to clarify or about your position going into the house or or your experience in the house um no well i mean it's hard to compress, as you said, 24 hours into 90 minutes or mm. whatever, it, whatever it is. But um, I feel like they really tried to make me one dimensional and I'm not. And I am emotional and I'm brutally forward. And so I, I wish that they didn't play so much the love story. There's a lot of backstory there that I guess it's not really my place to go into because I don't want to be disrespectful. Um, but at the same time, I'm not pumped on on how it turned out in that aspect, I guess. Okay. So finally, um, I, I guess every uh, eviction housemate we asked this question, who would you like to see win Big Brother? And also, if you were putting on a bet on, on who do you think actually will win Big Brother, who, who would you say? Who I'd like to see win is either Dave because of his foundation with Rough Tracks and, you know, he's bettering other people's lives and Reggie because she's got her kid and she is such a legend, but that money could be used for a good cause. Like all of us, we're healthy, we're happy and we can make money outside of the house. Whereas 
yeah, I'd love to see Reggie or Dave go the whole way. And what kind of person would vote off Reggie, honestly? Like, that's an, a self-addiction in itself, um, in my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Josh, pretty tough. Certainly um, an interesting and memorable experience for you um, and the audience. But um, thank you for chatting with me tonight. Anytime. Appreciate the call. <laughs> awesome. That was Josh, first evicted from Big Brother 2022. That's it for tonight. Thank you for listening. I'm Aaron Ryan. I'll be back with the second eviction very soon. Good night.